What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to another video and this one is going to be a little special one. Very nostalgic for the people who have followed me for a while. Since last year pretty much. Today we're going out to Western Massachusetts onto the road trip out there. Not to play at MGM Springfield but to play at a friendly home game with some people that I haven't seen in a while. And if you have followed this channel since last year when I had like 5,000 subscribers, I was playing a lot at MGM Springfield and I haven't seen these people in a while. Uh, these are the people that kind of embraced me and really just helped me a ton with learning the game of poker and it's a really cool community out here. So, um, haven't seen them in a while, MGM Springfield, no poker in Massachusetts, so uh, friendly home game, happy to see some familiar and friendly faces. So this should be a really fun one for the, you guys, for the people that have watched me for a while. If you haven't, um, if you just joined the, the channel recently, it'll be a fun one. It'll be a one-two, very friendly home game. Sure, we'll mix it up. Sure, our uh, our ranges can't be more wider, but here we are. Anyways, uh, it, it will be wider. But um, hopefully you enjoy this video and onto this road trip. It should be a ton of fun, and I can't wait to see uh, everyone there. So follow me on this road trip. Let's do it. We sit down on this friendly 1-2 game and we sit down with a $500 starting stack and first hand in, Jack Nine of Diamonds, we're on the cutoff and there's a button straddle. The small blind opens it up too, $15 and action folds around to me. Yeah, we're early on in the session, let's widen up our 3 betting range. So we put in the 3 bet in position to $45 um, and the button folds and the small blind will make the call. Going to a flop which comes Queen, Queen, 10, Rainbow with one diamond out there. He doesn't have too much behind, so I throw out a larger bet of $70, either hoping to induce a jam or a fold. He thinks about it and ends up putting in the jam for $169 total. Well, it's only 99 more. We have our open ended draw and our backdoor diamond, so uh, let's just call and see if we get there. We call, we decide to run it once, and we're off to a run out. Yeah, yeah. Can we just suck out one time? The runout does not improve us, unfortunately, although we do have a pair of nines. He shows us ace-10 offsuit, and just like that, we're adding on to our stack for $200 more. How the hell do you do that? Like, okay, kids love cucumbers. Kids love Next hand, a few orbits later, we look down at ace-3 of spades in plus one. Certainly going to be playing this one, even though we're in early position. I open it up to $12. The player to my left makes the call. And the cutoff now three bets to $50. It folds to me, and this is definitely a great spot to put, turn my hand into a four bet. Kind of four bet light here, although we're out of position. But this player has three bet me a few times before in this session so far. So I think uh, he certainly doesn't have to be three betting me with a premium hand. So with that said, um, we're going to stick to the plan here. This is definitely a good hand to four bet with. So I size to $130. The other player that called 12 will fold, and now he thinks about it and makes the call with about 320-ish dollars deep. So we're going to a flop, which is just fantastic. It's a dream flop of ace, five, eight, two spades. Top pair, nut flush draw. This is perfect. Here in this instance, I decided to actually check here. Um, we're never getting a fold from better aces here, I don't think. So if we were to lead out and bet here, I think we just fold out a lot of his premium pairs. And uh, he can certainly bluff as well if he were to completely whiff and seize weakness. So I check out of position and sadly he checks it back. The turn comes the 10 of diamonds. Um, with that said, we're definitely going to have to bet now with top pair. Charge some draws that are out there, maybe get some value from pocket pairs that are non-believing. So I throw out a bet of $90, pretty small in a 3 bet pot. He thinks about the $90 and makes the call. Let's hope to improve and see a spade. The river comes the five of diamonds. This isn't amazing, but although really not the worst card as now we have a 10 kicker with our ace. So what do we do in this spot? I have no idea and debate between a line of either check calling, we can check fold, or we can bet small to target a sticky hand like jacks through kings. With that said, we love going for thin value, and I think if we were to check, it just opens the door for a lot of awful things to come. So I throw out a bet of $125, pretty small. Like I said, trying to target smaller pocket pairs, and we definitely are never getting a fold from 
bigger aces anyways. He makes the call pretty quickly for 125. I show my hand and he surprisingly shows us ace deuce of diamonds. We're going to chop this one up. Um, maybe we could have gotten it all in on the flop there and could have just been free rolling. Who knows, but we're going to be chopping it up. Third hand into the session, we pick up ace, eight of diamonds and plus one. Under the gun opens up the action by limping, so that's great. Nier definitely going to be putting in the raise, so I size up to $15 in this 1-2 game. Action ensues as the cutoff makes the call and the limper makes the call. Three ways to a flop, which comes ace, nine, deuce, two spades. Action checks to me, and we're definitely putting in the C bet with top pair. I decided to size up a little bit more here to $30, and only the limper makes the call. Going to a turn, hoping to not see a spade. The turn comes with the eight of spades. He checks now, and I have one of two options. I certainly can throw out a bet for value, trying to target one spade holdings or some sort, since we did improve the two pair. So with that said, I throw out a bet of $45, and he doesn't think too long before ripping his entire stack in, but his stack is not too big. It's only $144, so it feels like a pretty bad spot when I do face a jam here. Um, I did bet really small on this turn to get information about what he could be holding, and I don't think this is a player that's going to be jamming the king of spades or anything like that. So um, I tank for a while, and I think at best I'm going to have four outs and... Obviously, when you're only having four outs, drawing pretty slim, I don't think we can call this. So I think about it, end up folding face up, and uh, he later tells us that he had ace nine, actually. So um, somehow got away with it there. Didn't lose the minimum, but uh, certainly could have lost a lot more. Nice to fold that one and walk away from that hand. Quick interruption in this video here to thank this video sponsor, which is me. You got it. Uh, so I know that there is a pretty long delay, about like a month behind in terms of current time and when the videos are being posted and when the session was played. So if you want to be more up to date as to my current sessions as to how I'm doing, feel free to follow me on the only social media account that I really use is Instagram, Rampage Poker, two A's of the second A. Uh, feel free to give me a follow. I always post updates. I try to answer as many messages as possible. And if just if you want to be more up to date, more current as to what I'm doing, that's a social media account that I am on. So feel free to give me a follow there on Instagram. Secondly, stock market has been crazy. And there are two really cool mobile stock brokerages and apps that you can use to buy and sell stocks and just check up on the market regularly. It's called Robinhood and Rebel. I'm just giving them a shout out because if you use my affiliate link, then we both can benefit from it. Uh, Robinhood, they give you a free stock once you sign up using my link, Webull. They give you two free stocks if you deposit $100 or more into the account. So uh, you get a free stock, I get a free stock. It's a really cool way to just help support the channel a little bit. Last time I did something like this, I got an Apple stock, which is crazy. So you just might get something cool too if you don't have those yet. So um, yeah, feel free to follow me on Instagram. Go use the affiliate links if you want to make an account on Robinhood or Webull. Just use my affiliate link and we both get rewarded. Fantastic stuff. Anyways, thanks for the support and we'll get back into the video. Next hand we go, we have a premium this time, pocket queens in the big blind. There are two limpers to me and sitting out of position, let's put in the raise to $17. One of the limpers folds and the small blind who also limps makes the call. So pretty surprising, uh, didn't think he would just limp call uh, $17, but here we are. The flop comes seven, six, six, two spades. And when he checks to us, I think this is a board that's going to favor his range more than mine, but sitting with an overpair, we're definitely going to have to bet. So I size pretty small to just $10 in this spot. We get some information about his holding because he puts in that check raise. He check raises to $45. And this is something I haven't seen him do too much. This is the same player that I lost my ace eight to ace nine against. And he didn't even check raise us on that flop. So if he's not going to check raise us with top two, I don't think he's going to do this for value, I don't think. So um, with that said, I'm just going to make the call for now and evaluate later streets. So we call and hope to see a pretty brick turn. The turn comes the ace of hearts and not ideal of a card for us, but there shouldn't be too many aces in his range besides a seven, but I don't think he's going to check raise a seven too often. With that said, he throws out a bet of $50, and like I said, I'm going to be a non-believer here, and uh, as this ace is also much better for my range than his, I make the call, and we're off to a river. The river comes the three of diamonds. Now, this is pretty much a total brick, and even better, he checks to us. Can we ever just check it back? Um, no, we're not. We're not going to check this one back, and I think we're going to go for thin value on the river, because... 
that's just what we love to do. Trying to target 7x, I throw out a very small bet of $35. He's not happy with this bet, and he tells us that he missed a straight flush draw. So he's going to fold there, and um, yeah, that's fine with us. We're just going to take this one down. We definitely could have gotten a lot more money in on the flop there um, if we were just 3-bet with one pair in our over pair, but didn't want to value ourselves if we were behind. But um, yeah, lucky to take this one down. We've been chipping up here just a little bit, and I think we're almost out of the hole when we pick up Jack-10 offsuit on the small blind. There's an undergun player who limps. Then next player to act, plus one, raises it up to $12. Action ensues because there are now three callers to me. Sitting in the small blind, $11 more to call. I don't like this spot. I don't like this hand out of position, but um, no rake is really helpful for us to widen up our range and see more flops. So we just make the call, the big blind calls, the only gun limper calls. We're going seven ways to a flop. The flop comes jack, seven, eight, two spades. Okay, well, if there was a flop for us to ask for, this is definitely good enough. And facing multi-way action and sitting with top pair in a decent kicker and a gutter, I throw out a donk lead in this spot to $40. It seems like a pretty marginal spot here, but I think we want to take control of this flop. And if we bet out $40 and get raised, we get some inf valuable information that we probably wouldn't have gotten and we don't want this to check through. All right, there's a lot of different reasons why we're betting here. So we donk lead 40 and we thin out the field from seven to two as only the only gun limper makes the call. Off to a turn, which comes the ace of spades. Once again, another very interesting card. We do improve to a 10 eye flush draw along with a gutter and along with a pair. But I don't think we're going to be betting in this spot because... Uh, if we do face a raise, then that's just horrible to get blown off all of our equity. So with that said, I check. He throws out a very small bet of $60, and this is a little uncomfortable. Um, we are getting a little bit less than 3 to 1 on a call. So kind of priced in to a certain degree. We do have a lot going for us that we can improve to. I just make the call out of position. We'll see what happens on the river. The river comes the 9 of diamonds. And for the third time and for the third street on this hand, what an interesting spot. We obviously improve to our straight. There's a four liner out there. We hold the 10. Um, how do we get value from this hand? How do we win this hand potentially? Like, are we ever good here? Are we ever up against the flush here? It's time to find out. I do just a really weird line and now decide to donk lead on this river for $75, hoping for two pairs to call or some sort. And definitely going to have to fold to a raise if he does. But he quickly makes the call, snaps it off, and we show our hand. Jack-10 offsuit, and looks like our straight is going to take it down. I'm not entirely sure what he could have held in this spot, limping under the gun. But uh, we'll take the gutter ball, and we'll take the pot. Hand after that, picking up Queen-9 of hearts on the button. The very next hand here. And the only gun player opens up the action to $10. There are two calls to me, and still trying to figure out our chips. Um, this is a decent spot to put in a light 3-bet. We're in position, this table has been very passive, and we don't really love playing pots multi-way. So with that said, I 3-bet to $65, and only the under the gun player makes the call. Although under the gun ranges should be fairly narrow, um, this player has been mixing up his preflop sizings, and I think $10 is on the smaller end of it, so it doesn't seem like he has a premium. Anyways, heads up to a flop, which comes 8, 5, 6, 2 hearts, and a spade. He checks to us, and this is a dream flop, pretty much. Gutter ball, queen high flush draw, and I don't think it's going to smash his under the gun opening range too much. I size down to one third pot to $55, and uh, he thinks for a while and ends up putting in the call. Let's hope to improve. Let's hope to make our lives a little bit easier. The turn comes the six of clubs. All right, that doesn't make our lives easier one bit. He checks with 225-ish dollars behind, and uh, well, we're going to have to just rip it all in here. Uh, don't really have much to do. Maximize fold equity. We have a lot of draws and a lot of cards to help us out. So we rip it all in, and he tanks for a long time. A minute or two passes by and ultimately ends up on a fold. So nice to always take down pots with queen high. Uh, we get away with 3-betting fairly light here, and yeah, taking it down. Alrighty, last significant hand of the night we're going to go over. This one is fun. 
ace deuce of spades in the cutoff there's a button straddle and we're playing six handed short handed now we love this let's take advantage the big blind throws in the limp um, since there's the button straddle action onto me uh certainly going to put in that raise with a suited ace so i size to 25 dollars and we get the button straddler to call 25 and so does the limper three ways to a flop which comes ace nine eight two spades once again another great spot with top pair and the nut flush draw when the big blind checks to us i think we can size down here with 75 in the middle uh, i don't throw out a too big of a sizing like i normally would with a bigger ace i size the 40 dollars with the board pretty much all locked up and uh, we are just trying to get value from where somehow or just draws the button folds and the big blind makes the call for 40. he's got a fairly large stack so let's just uh, hopefully find a way to improve here the turn comes the Jack of Diamonds. Uh, he checks to us, and I think now on this card, it's going to be pretty ambitious for us to bet for value and go for three streets with a horrible kicker. I decided to check it back as I think it would be ambitious for us to get three streets of value. Off to a river, which comes the Three of Spades. Wow. Perfect. Sitting with the nuts now, and even better after rivering the nuts, he leads out into us for $75. Yeah, sitting with the nuts, getting bet into, um, pretty much a dream scenario. So we put in that raise to $250, and he immediately announces all in for about $460, obviously with the nuts. I snap call. He shows us pocket jacks. Wow, what a hand for a turn to set, and we're going to scoop this one up. He sucks out on the turn, and we re-suck out on the river for stacks. Always nice to win a pretty big pot in a 1-2 game. And we are out of the session. Um, ending things off, I'm heading back home, back to Boston, got quite the trip ahead of me, but I uh, hopefully enjoyed this video. Uh, nice way to mix things up. Let me know what you guys thought about it. Uh, mixing in some home games. Always nice to play a very friendly one to unraked, and I got to mix things up. Uh, unraked is actually kind of fun. You get to widen up your range just a tad bit, like on that Jack 10 hand. Seemed like uh, I had to call and we, we sucked out with the gutter ball. But um, yeah, we, we ended up pretty well. We were in the game for $700 and out of the game for $19.65. It was always nice to just kind of go back to where I started playing poker pretty much, where I kind of grew up and learned the game um, near MGM, near the Western Mass area. Always a nice time to play with them. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below. Happy to mix in some more different footage from home games and whatnot. And yeah, leave a like if you made it this far. Really appreciate all the support on this channel so far. It's been amazing. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.